Okay. All right, guys. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Data Theorem Webinar Seminar Series, and uh, we will be talking about how to deal with fraudulent counterfeit apps. Um, just a quick note about the company. Um, so Data Theorem was started in Silicon Valley. We worked quite a lot in the security industry with sort of deep, strong experience in this industry. As a result, we've been fortunate enough um, to work with some very interesting customers and to become an extension of many of our customers' modern uh, application security programs, which focus on APIs, mobile applications, and even modern web app security. Uh, before I introduce our speaker today, uh, we'd ask to, you all to submit your questions into the Q&A chat window. Uh, we will save some time at the end to address uh, some of those some of those questions. Um, sorry, getting a little bit of feedback noise here. Apologize. Um, our presenter today is um, Richard Smith, a director at Data Theorem. Um, and Richard, feel free to take it away. Thank you, Doug. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, so I'm Richard Smith. I'll be your presenter for today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do a quick uh, intro on the webinar. Um, and Doug, you may want to mute your mic because I can still kind of hear your uh, feedback from it. There we go. Okay, fix the fix the audio show. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, so today, obviously, we're going to talk about counterfeit and fraudulent apps. I want to just run through a quick agenda, and then we'll we'll dive into the each of the topics. Uh, so we're going to talk about the, do an overview of fraudulent counterfeit apps. Then we'll look at the business impacts of counterfeit apps. Uh, we'll look at the challenges of dealing with these counterfeit apps, and then obviously we'll look at the uh, the benefits of using solutions, automated security solutions, uh, to address them. And then we'll do a quick recap summary. So to get started. Uh, I want to just do a quick overview of what fraudulent counterfeit apps are. And I just want to define this. So a counterfeit app is an unauthorized app that exploits the reach and use and user of a brand or mobile app for financial gain. And so real quick, uh, I want to put a little challenge out there to the audience, and that is, can you spot the counterfeit app out of these apps? If you've kind of been looking at this for a second, you're probably looking at it and going, these all look like legitimate apps. I'll add one more element for you. Um, here, so you can see that. And if you look at this, you can see that it's, uh, the, it's iTunes store that this is published in. But, but for those of you who are really looking at this, might realize that all these are counterfeit apps. Uh, and if you've noticed, it's because the publisher ID is Footlock, right? Not Footlocker. Um, so these were all uh, counterfeit apps are uploaded under a false publisher ID, um, which actually made it into the Apple App Store. Another example of this, if, if you can spot the counterfeit app, um, and this is an image, and I, I apologize, I know it's a little bit uh, noisy, um, but there's a couple things that I like about it that it highlights, and that's that this is WhatsApp. In the top left-hand corner, you can see the real WhatsApp app, but you can also see all these other basically counterfeit or clones and uh, false versions of this app. Some of them are very obvious, like the swirling uh, galaxy picture there, um, but a lot of them are not. And the only way you can tell, and if you can look at some of these red boxes, is there's things like apostrophes in the app ID or the publisher ID or semicolons and really little things that are really hard for um, a regular consumer to spot and then unknowingly will download some of these counterfeit apps. So let's talk about the types of counterfeit apps. So there's really two types of counterfeit apps. The first is what we call clones, and clones I've got probably the most famous clone out there, uh, which is Dolly the, the, the sheep. And you can see here, um, let me just kind of mute some of the noise there. Um, you can see uh, the cloned app. Now a cloned app is an app, is a counterfeit app that takes a legitimate app and it, they clone the binary, so it's an exact replica, and then you know some malicious activity is done with it. Now the other type of counterfeit app is the uh, brand abuse use case. And this is a little different in that it's not taking a legitimate app and then just cloning it for the purpose of exploiting it, um, but it's actually just a false app altogether, so it's not a, there was no real basis for the app in the first place from the, from the particular brand or vendor or company, um, but there's a use of a brand in order to get people to uh, download or consume that app. 
So let's dive into these a little bit deeper. So again, the clone is a, a copy of an original app binary. Uh, they tend to appear mostly in third-party app stores, and we'll talk about why that is in a minute. Um, the malicious activity we tend to see with clones is since it is a, there's a legitimate app that was cloned here, there's a, in most cases there's code injections that were that do malicious activity that get added to them. And then obviously because they're getting uploaded into to other app stores or places they may not be, they start to reach unintended audiences. And so how easy is it uh, to, to, to find this? Well, let's take a look here. This is an example we have. And on the bottom you'll see that this is the legitimate application for Uber. You see the icon, you see the, the app name, very straightforward. If you look at the top, this is a third-party app store that has a, uh, a clone version of the Uber app. And as you can see, same icon, same name, but the publisher ID is Super User 4K, which we probably know is not Uber publishing their app under that ID. And that store even reported 3 million potential downloads. So obviously this could have a huge customer impact for, for, for Uber. Now, how easy is it to clone an app? Well, it's unfortunately extremely easy. There are several copy and clone tools out there that, that can let you clone an app in just a few clicks. Um, one of the most famous ones out there is App Cloner, probably the most famous. Um, and as you can see here, for those who are reading kind of the fine print, I know it's hard to see here, you'll see welcome to the official home of the App Cloner after Google Play Store suspension. So even Google identified that this type of thing is introducing large numbers of counterfeit or malicious apps, and they suspended it. But again, these things live on, um, and anybody can continue to do this. So it's not that hard to go out there and make these counterfeit apps. So the second use case that we talked about was brand abuse. So I want to dive into this one a little bit deeper as well. In this case, it's an app that uses logos, trademarks, copyright, infringements, things like that to promote a fraudulent app. Now we see these pop up even in, uh, more prominently in legitimate app stores like Google Play or Apple App Store and third-party app stores. Um, they kind of, by nature, they're, malicious, they're, they're designed to be malicious, right? Um, and they're really after exploiting an unaware audience. mute the extra noise there. Um, and so as I move forward, uh, there's another example here. Now, same example, legitimate app. But if you look above, you can see there's a brand abuse version of an app. Now, what's different here is you can see it's not the same icon. It's actually not even the same name, app name. But it is the Uber logo. It's just a different variant that they use. They've added some elements to it, and then they've obviously altered the name. And if you're a, you know, a, a Russian consumer, you could be going thinking you're downloading an Uber app, but in reality, you're not. You're downloading uh, you know, a, a brand abuse or a counterfeit app that's, that's presenting itself as a fraudulent app. So why does this happen? Well, the reality is counterfeit apps make money, and there's a, there's a few really prominent ways they do that. Uh, the first is, and probably the most common, is a cash grab, right? Um, and this can happen both in clones or in brand abuse scenarios. So in clones, this is where uh, code will get injected, and that's typically uh, uh, ad injection. So they'll just add uh, adware or ads that pop up on the app, which was never your original app's intent, uh, with the idea that they just want to have you click on it, move you away from the app, get you to go you know, clickbait, and then obviously they're just trying to grab as much cash as they can before, before that app gets shut down. The more malicious versions are really phishing attacks and extra permissions. Um, and like, for example, with phishing attacks, this is same, same scenario, code injection, or even just a malicious altogether. They're trying to get, you know, username and password credentials um, so that they can either resell those or exploit them by, you know, going into your banking app and making fraudulent transactions, things like that, to obviously do a cash grab or money pull. And then in the extra permissions example, asking for permissions that you may have not intended to do in order to get personal data or financial data and extract more uh, information from the user. Good example of this is would your banking app really ask you to have, for access to your SMS messages, right? So that'd be an area that'd be, if you see things like that, obviously there's been something that's been injected to ask for additional permissions. Now let's talk about the business impacts of counterfeit apps. So counterfeit apps make news. Right? Um, there's tons of scenarios. We continue to see more and more headlines around counterfeit apps really out there designed just to dupe potential customers um, into you know, doing you know, some behavior to exploit them, to make money of the use cases we just saw. So whether it's fake retail apps right before the holidays, which has happened over the last few years, all the way to what happened with the fake Amazon Alexa app 
uh, back in December 2018. So just very recent holiday season. What was concerning in this case, it was a brand abuse case. It was exploiting the Amazon brand. But what, what made it really challenging was it trended. It actually got to number six under top utilities uh, on the Apple App Store before it was addressed. Um, and obviously that led to a lot of fallout and perception of brand for, for Amazon. And so let's talk about those negative impacts. So the first is really loss of revenue, right? And that, that comes in a number of different ways, but anytime where we see something like a cash gra grab example, they're pulling your customer away from your app experience and moving it to theirs, right? They're getting them out of that app. They want them to go buy or consume or do clickbait to somewhere else, and they're pulling away that uh, revenue from, from your app design to something else, and they're taking that, that, that revenue from you, right? So that's always a huge challenge. There's also the after or fallout from a negative uh, from a counterfeit app. We have to just the cost to, to deal with damage control that also hits the bottom line at the end of the day. So that's another big impact for loss of revenue. The next one is account takeover. So this is going back to that phishing attack where they take somebody's username credential. They, once they have that, then they can go do some kind of fraudulent transaction. Um, we saw this with a few banks in India where there was a, there's a recent article about it where they did a phishing attack. They got their, the, the bank's lot customer data was, was taken, and then the attackers went and made fraudulent transactions. So the bank legally probably did not have to do anything about fixing that issue, but obviously from their own customer service and other things, they had to go and address the situation in that use case. And then lastly, right, the one that we all know, and, and, and again goes back to why we don't like to see these headlines, is negative brand reputation, right? So whether it's in the form of what happened to Amazon, where their Echo product got negative reviews, um, which obviously they don't want on a product, especially when it wasn't for an app <laughs> that they didn't even create. Those are the types of things that really hurt us in the public eye and then can lead to fallout of potential customers or even start to lose customers um, from there, which goes back to that loss in revenue. So what are the challenges of dealing with counterfeit apps? It is a big challenge and it's a global challenge, right? A lot of us are used to going to uh, Apple App Store or the Google Play Store to consume our apps. But there are other factors out there that make that not necessarily possible for other markets. So if we look at China, for example, this is probably the best use case. Um, they don't allow Google, app, uh, Google Play to operate in the Chinese market, which has created this need because they're, you know, obviously Android's got the largest uh, market share from a mobile device. So all those Android users have to go somewhere to download their apps. So there's been tons of app stores that have emerged in the Chinese market um, like Tencent and others to be able to fulfill those needs. Um, but what we think is interesting about this, and one of the things that we're seeing at Data Theorem and some of the research we're doing, is in all these cases, the legitimate or third-party app stores, we're finding that the second largest consumers are not uh, are outside of the country itself and actually always go back to the United States as the second largest consumer. So this is a global problem for brands. Even if you're not operating in those countries, it's still impacting users uh, in, your in your country of origin and where you're operating from. So let's go a little deeper into this challenge on these third-party global app stores. The first is there's hundreds of them. So having to go out there and find them all can be a very daunting task. Um, there's a lot that you have to go out there and look for and then obviously see if there's your there's versions of counterfeit apps that are impacting your company or brand in those stores. Which then leads to the next big challenge, and there's, there's a real good reason here for why this happens, but there's a lack of policing or governance in a lot of these third-party app stores as well. And the reason for that is for these third-party app stores to have viability, they need lots of apps, right? They, they, they function on the fact that they have lots of apps to attract their own user base to so that they can obviously build out their app store and obviously their business model around it, right? And that kind of leads into a challenge for my last point here, which is, which is removing or going through the removal process of taking down an app. Again, when these app stores rely on large numbers of apps for their viability, it's not always in their interest to make it very easy for people to take apps off. A lot of cases, they wait until there's a known virus or something gets reported or they have a user revolt before they'll even think to take something down. But as a company coming over and saying, well, who may not have even legal jurisdiction very simply, they're not going to do things very easily. And it ends up being a game of persistence and just having to continuously chase them down, um, which can be very time consuming. And it's a challenge that you know, none of us have the time to go after and chase this, especially across hundreds of stores. So what ends up happening is it becomes a, a global whack-a-mole problem, right? It's a matter of finding the app when it pops up, 
taking it down as fast as you can to, to mitigate the, the impact to your brand or your bottom line or the loss of revenue. And then it's just a matter of time before it pops up again from another published ID and you got to repeat the whole cycle. So it's just an ongoing challenge and it never kind of stops. You just got to keep going at it and you just got to take them down when you can and be ahead of it as best you can. So let's talk about the benefits of taking an automated security approach to this. So the first is we've got to look at how you automate the, the discovery of these apps. So you're going to have to create automated crawlers. They're going to go out there and scan all of these hundreds of stores, which I know is, is daunting in of itself, but having them go out and crawl these stores looking for counterfeit apps. And then when you find one, you've got to then compare that to your legitimate app. Because a lot of times first it's going to be some kind of a suspect app. But you've got to go do an analysis and make sure that it's obviously an actual counterfeit app. Um, this is easier done for clones, right? Because you have a basis knowing your legitimate app, your icon, and so forth. It's, it's, a, it's a replica of your binary, maybe with some code injection, some other things. But where this becomes really challenging is in those brand abuse use cases that we talked about, right? Because in those cases, it's, you have to identify brand elements um, that are being used or some because of the app itself is completely fake from the get-go. You have no basis for what you're looking for and you've got to figure out a way that you're going to go uh, use you know, something like an advanced machine learning technique to do image analysis and other things to take down those apps. Now the last part that, that obviously continues to add to this challenge is um, the removal process we talked about. It's a very tedious problem. It's, it takes a lot of persistence to get your app removed. In most cases, it's just continuous request and request and request and being the squeaky wheel. But that's very time demanding for uh, anybody in any organization to have to go through, especially if you're finding hundreds of apps across hundreds of app stores that all have different removal processes and, and the way they take it down. So being able to automate the removal process not only helps you save time in pursuing that takedown, but also when that reemerges, because we talked about this earlier, it's only a matter of time before it pops back up on the same app store in a lot of cases, just under a different publisher ID, and you got to start the whole process again. So as you can see here, the real key to a lot of this is automation. So our answer is leveraging an automated analyzer engine that conducts continuous global app discovery, application categorization by each clone and brand of use, and then helps you either through automated removal and takedown, or lets you at least make educated decisions on the apps that you deem to be truly counterfeit or abusing your brand and take those down for you and going through that takedown process in an automated fashion so you're not spending time going through that every week. So in summary, fraudulent counterfeit apps make money and they make news. They impact our brands, our customers, our privacy and our liability. It's an ongoing reoccurring challenge and automation is the key to solving it. That's, that's what I have for you guys today. Well, Richard, that was great. Uh, thanks so much for this webinar. I um, want to turn our attention to the Q&A uh, section. Uh, there were some questions that came through and hope you can ha answer some of these. So one of the questions um, that came through was, um, when an app is cloned, um, how does Data Theorem figure out if the code has been modified or not? Yeah, it's a good question. So. One of the things that we do uniquely uh, at Data Theorem is obviously we have a lot of history in mobile and application um, security. And we can actually use our solutions to look at the legitimate app as a baseline and then compare that to a counterfeit or suspect app and see if there's been uh, things like code injections that have been done by looking at the, uh, the code base and seeing where that's been happened. Um, and then even determine if things like permissions are being requested and be able to identify that and even use advanced kind of machine learning techniques to do that as well, kind of like the, uh, the brand abuse scenarios where we compare a lot of different images and see if there's elements and things like that um, that have been added to those apps as well. All right, great. Uh, another question that's, um, I think it's related to the to sort of non-English stores. So it says, what about non-English stores? Like for compliance, um, how do we send sort of legal cease and desist, you know, notices to these third party stores? Yeah, um, you know, that's a challenge. And again, this is one of those things where every app store has got their own process. Some make it very difficult. And to, to, that, to that point is you have to send legal things and so forth. Um, 
So what we, one of the things that we do is we help facilitate that in the process. You know, as part of us doing automated takedowns on our customers' behalf, um, we know those steps. We know those for a lot of the major stores. We can help facilitate that, you know, uh, be the coordinator in facilitating the lingual language going between that, and then obviously helping you, um, because of the fact that this is a global problem, um, deal with that in other, other regions or uh, other countries and so forth. Um, in a lot of cases, going back to the kind of that first question that you'd asked, um, one of the other benefits of our ability to do that kind of delta analysis between the legitimate app and the counterfeit app is that can then help bolster a legal case or a takedown request saying, hey, this app is acting malicious you need to take it down now. So, um, so yeah, so that's definitely something we can help with the data theorem. Well, we have a few more questions, but I don't think we'll have time for it, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with them offline. So um, just want to say thank you and uh, appreciate everyone's time. Thank you, everyone.